Hello students, welcome to Edible Art Club. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a gingerbread house out of Pop-Tarts. So I made one this morning. This is what mine looks like. It's the side of it. Here's the front of it. It's a little bit sloppy. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Watts made a couple last week. Let me show you what hers look like. Let me share my screen, screen for a minute. All right, here's one of Mrs. Watts. And um, she used a lot of different candies to decorate hers. As you can see, she had like a little candy like soldier. Here's another one. She had a little bit of uh, like a little snow pond over here with trees and a snowman. And then here's mine. Mine's pretty simple, just Pop-Tarts, candy and frosting. All right, so what you will need to make your Pop-Tart gingerbread house I guess theoretically it's not a gingerbread house, it's just a Pop-Tart house. You will need Pop-Tarts and frosting, a can of frosting. And that's it, those are the two ingredients and then any type of candy to decorate it if you want. But this is the basic thing that you need, Pop-Tarts and frosting. I just used um, the No Name brand from the dollar store. So I spent $1 on Pop-Tarts and then I spent $1 on a can of frosting. So for $2 I was able to, to make a gingerbread house and I happen to have candy um, oh, actually, I did buy this bag of candy at the dollar store. What's nice about these, it's got all red, white, and green little packages of candy balls. And really, that's all you need. So for $3, you can make a gingerbread house if you go to the dollar store. They also sell Pop-Tarts at Walmart. I think I paid $1.50 for this, and this has 12, so this is enough to make two Pop-Tart gingerbread houses. Or you can just get the traditional Pop-Tart brand. This costs a little bit more, maybe $3, I'm not really sure. So basically Pop-Tarts and frosting. Okay, so what you'll have to do is open up all of your ingredients that you're gonna use. I'm just gonna aim the camera down at my workspace here. Okay, so I've got one package of Pop-Tarts, which is six Pop-Tarts. That's what you need, six Pop-Tarts to make this. Open them up and get those ready. I've got my can of frosting opened and ready to go. And then I just happen to have some assorted candy in the house, so that's what I'm going to use. I had some Skittles. I had some Starburst. What's nice about the Starburst is if you heat it up for 15 seconds and microwave it, you can squish it down and make it into any shape. So Starbursts are actually a very good candy to use. That's what I used on the windows of my um, gingerbread house there. I just flattened those yellow Starbursts out. Um, and then I got some candy canes. And then, like I said, those sixlets, because those are like green and red and Christmassy color balls. All right. So you're going to take your six Pop-Tarts and you're going to take two of them and set them aside. That's for the roof. You're going to take two of them and you're going to cut them for the, the peaks, uh, like the front of the house. So this part right here, see how I got that like triangle? We're going to cut those. So I'm going to show you how to measure those and cut those. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this. And the best thing to use is a serrated knife. What I mean by a serrated knife is it's got those little ridges on it. If you have a butter knife that has those little ridges on it, that would work. See those little ridges right there? Because you actually want to saw the Pop-Tart. If you just push, it's going to crack. So I'm going to take one Pop-Tart and I'm going to put another one next to it so it's like a rectangle like that. That's what I'm going to use for my measurement right here. And I'm going to cut halfway up to make my angle. So halfway is about right here. So I'm just gonna cut like this. I'll move this out of the way once I get it started and see how I sawed it like that. And then I got a little triangle and you can save this because you or you can eat it because um, we can use that to decorate. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna measure right there because I want that height right there. I'm gonna go right to the point right there and I'm just gonna cut that. And I sawed it. Now you need two of these. So you need two of these for the one for the front and one for the back. Now I was a little bit off on that one. So what I want to do, I want my other one to be exactly the same. So I'm going to put it up against it like that so that when I cut it, um, see one, one of my angles is a little bit different, but I want them to be identical. So then I'm going to saw and saw. And now I have two that are identical. I'm gonna put those aside. Now I've still got my two for my roof that I'm not gonna cut at all. I've got my front and my back that I cut with the peaks. 
Now for the sides of the, um, the sides, the other side of the top tart house, that's this side right here. We're gonna cut a little bit off of it just so it shortens it up so that the roof will overhang a little bit. Now all pop tarts, one side is frosted to the end and one side has a little bit of like the frosting. That's the side I'm gonna cut off, the part that doesn't have the frosting. Apparently all pop tarts are made like that. So I'm gonna cut about two fingers lengths off. So right about here. And it, it doesn't matter, you just wanna cut a little bit off so that the sides are a little bit shorter than the roof because you want the roof to overhang. Okay, now I have all my pop tarts set and ready to go. So now I'm gonna get my workspace. I like to work on a flat like plate so that way it's easy to move. So I chose this one because it's flat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some frosting on it so that my pop tarts have a place to like rest when I put it on there. So I'm just gonna take some frosting and I'm gonna put it in a little rectangle where I think my little Pop-Tarts are gonna go. So that when I set up my Pop-Tarts on there, they're gonna stick to something and they're not gonna go anyway, anywhere. So that looks about right. I've got a little rectangle that I can, and if you get messy, it doesn't matter. You can always wipe it up later. Okay, so now I can start building my Pop-Tart house. So I'm gonna take one of these in the front and I'm just gonna stick it right here in my frosting so that it's kind of standing up. I'm gonna take one of my sides, so that's one of my shorter rectangles, and I'm gonna put frosting right here. So I'm just gonna frost the edge of it so that that acts like glue. You don't need a lot. And then I'm gonna stick it up next to, let me just turn this so you can see. I'm gonna put it right here. So it's in my frosting and I'm gonna stick it up next to that and that frosting makes it stick. Mm, tastes good. Oh, one thing you should always have handy is paper towels to wipe your fingers because it's going to get messy. Now I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to frost it, the edge, frost the edge, and then I'm going to stick it to the other side. So I'm just going to go like this and see how the bottom sticking in this frosting that helps it hold together. Now these are the pop tarts from the dollar store. They are a little bit soft. I would. I really prefer to use the real brand, the Pop-Tart brand. They're a little bit stiffer, but I'm a cheapskate, so I use the uh, ones from the dollar store. All right, so now I'm gonna put on my other peak on this side here. So what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm gonna put a little frosting right here and on this side right here so that it sticks to the two walls that I already have right there, okay? And then I'm gonna stick it right here. And if they don't match up perfect, it's okay. Cause you're gonna cover, you can put frosting on the edges and make it look like snow. Now I just gotta put on my roof. So my roof is gonna go here and one right here. So I'm going to put some frosting on the edges here. And you just gotta be careful that don't press too hard, just kind of dab it cause you don't want it to fall apart. And I'm putting frosting on the whole thing so that I got plenty for my roof to stick to. Now, if you prefer not to use, like I get to use a butter knife to work with my frosting, but when Mrs. Watts did it, she put her frosting in a baggie like this, and you can do this and then just cut the end of it, and then you can squish it like piping, okay? Or you can buy these um, little bags of cookie icing. They sell these at the store. These are expensive, they're three bucks, and you can use those because like if you just squeeze this, then it comes out and you can pipe it. I think mine hardened. I was using it earlier. There it comes. So you just squeeze it and it comes out. And you can use that too. But I just prefer to use a butter knife and frosting. It works for me. Just like I said, don't push too hard. Just kind of blob it on there so that your roof has a nice place to sit. I'm going to put a little more frosting. And it doesn't matter if it's sloppy because it's just going to look like snow in the long run. Okay, looks like I have enough frosting on there. I'm going to take one roof and stick it on there. And you want it to overhang a little bit. It gives it a little bit of charm. And I'm gonna stick one roof and I'm gonna put it on there. There, I've got both of my roofs on there. So I like how it overhangs a little bit like that. See how it overhangs. And then what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna add some frosting to the edges here to make it look like snow. And then I'm gonna make it like drip down and then I'll start decorating it. 
And I did make a little bit of a mess here, but I'm gonna clean that all up later when I'm done. Okay, let's see how this angles. That looks good. All right, so I'm gonna take some uh, frosting and I'm just, I'm gonna hold my roof on a little bit. I'm just gonna put some along the edges so it looks like snow. Do some more on both sides. And I'm not real neat about it. I can neaten it up later. And I'm gonna do the whole edge because I want it to look like icicles. And you don't have to do this. You can if you want. You can decorate it any way you want. And I'm gonna put some up at the top here, cover up that seam like it's snow. Okay, and then once I have that all around the edges of my roof, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna pull some of the snow down and make it look like icicles dripping. And I was thinking you could probably do it with a fork too. See, when I do that and I just kind of let it drip down, it makes it look like there's icicles on there. See that? Cool, huh? And I'm going to do that around the whole thing because I like the look of icicles. And I'm just kind of like pulling down and I'm letting it like drip. Then I'm going to do the whole thing. I might add a little bit more frosting over here. I have a whole can of it. I'm not going to be shy. I'm going to use it up. And there we have it. It looks like I've got icicles hanging over my entire roof line. And I like that look because I like icicles. And I've got some on my walls, but that's okay. Okay, so the next thing you can do is um, figure out what you want to do for a door. Uh, you can use two candy canes. Um, so what I did in my last one is I took a candy cane like this and then I broke off a piece of another one and I put it together like this and that's what I made for my door. Um, this time I'm going to use a starburst. I've got a red starburst that I microwave for 15 seconds and then I just flattened it out with my fingers. I'm going to use that. So I'm going to put some frosting on the back side of it to make it stick to my house. So I put frosting on the back and then I'm just gonna stick it to the front like a door. And then if you wanna put a little doorknob on it, you can use a little frosting. I'm gonna use this cookie icing and I'll put a little doorknob on it and maybe a little window at the top. There, I have a door. Um, I'm gonna decorate the top with, with, you can use Skittles, you can use M&Ms, you could, I'm going to use these little green candy balls that I got. I'm going to put some on the top. And you can really decorate it any way that you want. You can look through your cupboard, see what you have. You can be creative. If you have like Oreos, you could cover them in frosting and put sprinkles on them. Um, I do have some sprinkles. In my last gingerbread house, I used green sprinkles to kind of make, look, make it look like a bush. See how I did that? I made those look like little bushes. So I just blobbed frosting there and put sprinkles on them to make it look like little bushes. Um, now I'm gonna use some Skittles maybe. I'll go up the sides. I like to be symmetrical. You don't have to be. You can just put random colors wherever you want. And I'll put some red ones along the edges. And then maybe I'll put some red ones on the back. So in my other house, what I made for windows, so I, like I said, I used those, um, I used the yellow uh, starburst because then I thought it kind of looked like the lights were on inside. But you can use anything you want. I'm, in this one, I'm just going to open up a Skittle and I'm not even going to flatten it out. I'm just going to use the square one just as like a window. I'm going to put some frosting on it. And then I'll put it on that side of my house for like a little red window right under there. And maybe I'll put another one on. Um, so I'm going to make some bushes or I'm going to try to make a tree. I'm going to use some of this leftover um, Pop-Tarts. I'm going to cover it in frosting. Just blob a whole bunch of frosting on it. I'm going to figure out if I use the Pop-Tart, it'll make it a little bit stiffer. So I just blob frosting on it and then I'm just going to put it right here. I'll put a little frosting on my plate so it sticks. I went upside down. And there, I made a little bush right there. 
If you want to add more frosting and try to pull it up, you can make it a little bit bigger. Um, maybe you could uh, stack a bunch of starburst and cover it in frosting. Maybe you want to decorate this with, oh, I'll put this, I have this green candy cane. That looks kind of good. I'll put some green candy canes back here. So you could do anything you want. I'm going to add some bushes and some snow over here. And basically, I'm just decorating with my plate and my frosting. And if I just pull it up like that, it'll make it look like I've got little bushes there. And then I can put my sprinkles on it. And it looks like I've got a little tree growing there. All right, so the possibilities are endless. You can decorate it however you want. All right, enjoy. Get as creative as you want. Send me some pictures when you're done. Bon appetit and happy crafting.